Having a tough time getting a grasp of building? Does it just seem too complicated? After this video, you'll find that building is as easy as riding a bike. Building is essential if you want to improve in Fortnite because it provides you more cover, lets you gain a height advantage on players, and most importantly, allows you to control your opponent's movements so you can make your plays with less risk of getting eliminated yourself. Now, before you start learning, take a few minutes to free build on creative. Place some cones, ramps, walls, floors, you name it. Go nuts! Doing this before every training session will keep the inputs fresh on your mind so you don't choke in the middle of an important fight. Now that you're warmed up, let's take a look at some essentials and then some tricks. One of the most important structures you can build is a box. You'll need to learn to build this as fast as possible, so do it this way to maximize your speed. Floors first, and then the wall in front of you, followed by the walls beside you. Finally, you want to place the floor above you and quickly snap back to get the wall behind you and finish the box. This is one of the more efficient ways to build a box because you won't be doubling back in any direction, which eats up time. However, if you want to improve your building skills, you not only need to work on that speed, but also you'll need to learn how to edit. Editing can seem like the most daunting mechanic to learn, and this challenge can turn a lot of newer players away from the mechanic altogether. We're not. If you're having trouble staying motivated, follow this tip. Maintain focus on learning individual tricks and forget about all the rest. Wall windows, cone variations, side edits are great. Some edits such as the staircase you rarely need, so keep them in the back burner for now. If you at least know how to do the most useful edits 100% of the time, then you've already graduated from noob school. Stop. Before you go any further, let's go back and take a look at your box. There's something missing that every pro likes to add for support. That's right, you should add a cone to your box immediately. One of the mistakes many newbie builders do is they make a box but use a floor or leave the ground completely empty. This one extra step in the building process gives you even more options during any fight. The cone itself will provide you extra cover because the floor is no longer flat and it has more versatile edits than a simple floor piece. So if someone manages to break one of your walls, you have a few more angles to work with. However, you can edit this as a way to move up towards the ceiling of the box or create even more cover in the direction of your choice. Editing in a window gives you an opening so you can take a shot. However, keep in mind that windows opened will also allow players to shoot inside your box. Again, keep track of your opponent and don't get one shot pumped. Huh. It's been a whole chapter since we told you guys to avoid getting pumped. Not every fight begins with boxes. One of the most basic moves you can learn is how to ramp rush. If your opponent comes rushing at you and starts building, then they are starting the fight hot. One option is to follow suit and ramp rush towards them to get clash, and one of you attempts to take the high ground. Ramp, floor, and wall are the three main components of this technique. Think of it as this. Your ramp will give you the lift you need to gain high ground, meanwhile your floors and walls will keep the ramp protected from simply being disconnected and tipping you overboard. However, not every fight will start off with two players rushing straight towards each other, and they won't be as predictable. Different variables will force you to think on your feet if you wish to succeed. So here's one trick you can swap into if your opponent gains the lead on that high ground. Think you have what it takes to go pro? Then click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com. For $7.99 a month, you can gain access to a treasure trove of content such as courses and even past boot camps. Join now and you can get 10% off pro-level coaching that can help you reach the top of the leaderboards. If you play Fortnite, then you've definitely heard the term cranking 90s. This is the fastest way to get high ground even though it lacks protection. Luckily, there is a modified version of this trick we'll look at later. The secret of a good 90 is simple. Floor ramp and wall, then repeat at a 90 degree angle. Do this with your jumps and you should be able to have a consistent upwards movement. However, be careful and keep your camera downwards if you want to prevent your builds from going in the wrong place. You can also place down an extra wall on top of the required one to add more protection from above if you still haven't gotten high ground yet. The key to a good retake is not the trick itself, but knowing which direction your opponent is going. If you can keep track of your opponent, then you know when to place a floor above them or which direction to build your ramps in to cut them off. Switch your techniques depending on the situation and try to remain unpredictable. In the form of a three-step cycle, track your opponent, get above them, and then cut them off. Now, if you understand those fundamentals, then you can have better direction in which move you want to do. Now, we can look at some tricks. Let's try a quick retake and the safest retake, but first, 
The question of the day. What is the hardest edit you just can't seem to get the grasp of? And what's one easy edit that just comes naturally to you? Leave your answers in the comment section down below. If your opponent is standing on your box, this is a great opportunity to put your building skills to use. Edit a door in the opposite direction of your opponent and then build a ramp. And before you start going up, place a wall on top of your box. This will prepare you so you could place a floor in that direction, cutting your opponent off and giving you time to go and take the high ground. Of course, this only works if there are no other builds around you. In an endgame situation, you will have other structures getting in the way. However, keep this one thing in mind before you panic. Once the storm starts moving, most players will be moving in the same direction as the storm, which makes other players somewhat more predictable, which is one less thing to worry about when figuring out the clearest path forward. Speaking of clear paths, this is the safest retake you'll ever find. Next in your box, place a ramp and place a wall above and in front of you. Then you're gonna wanna place a special wall on your left or right, depending on the position of your opponent or opponents. Finally, you do one ramp above you. This gives you complete protection from players in that direction as you keep moving up. The final wall of this build is yet another variable which shows how much of a retake also relies on your own instinct which is a skill you can only improve by experiencing it in a real match. Every noob forgets this vital piece of advice. Building, retakes, and piece control also require you to combine your techniques with the current loot pool. The Kinetic Sword is fantastic for dashing upwards and instantly getting above your opponent. Launch pads can also be found in stationary positions around the island and give you the lift off you need to get to a better position. Also, keep in mind that while building up is a race to the top, you can also attempt to bring your opponent down to your level by breaking their builds. Fortnite players are not perfect and a weak link might pop up from time to time, allowing you to easily clear some of the progress they've made and give you a better chance of getting to the top. However, the most important tool of all, especially when trying to claim a wall, might just be your pickaxe. This can soften your opponent's walls so you can punch through with a rapid fire weapon without running out of bullets. It can even be used as a form of misdirection when you smack one wall, but target another side of their box entirely. Keep your opponent guessing where you'll try to claim. Side jumping is vital towards your retakes, so start getting used to building while in midair. This will give you more maneuverability if you want to move in different directions that don't always follow the path of your builds. You'll need to get used to the timing for this if you want to avoid dying from fall damage. Peace control is another essential skill that you need to learn. If you've ever placed walls down to prevent your opponent from running away, then you've already grasped the basic concepts needed to use it properly. During any situation, having a box forces your opponent to break it down before they do anything to you. Same goes for peace control. If your opponent wants to have free movement, they need to get rid of any obstacles that might be in the way. Otherwise, they'll just hit a wall and they can't edit. There are many options to take down a wall. You can punch through it and hit your opponent with a rapid fire weapon, or you can time your builds precisely so you can break the wall and place your own. Like the basic pieces, repetition is key, though often you'll also need to learn a bit more timing to make the most of them. You'll be needing this to take shots at your opponents, but also as a way to maneuver out of tight situations. So find the appropriate map codes to train each skill individually. Here are some codes that will get you up to speed. Now, if you're a beginner and you're learning the basics, then we highly recommend this map, Raiders Edit Practice Map. This is a great beginner's map simply because it focuses on making you repeat a variety of edits over and over again until it's ingrained in your brain. This will help you when it's time to master peace control or when you need to remember a specific edit in different situations. Next, we have Raiders Peace Control V3. This map adds a few more components such as targeting an opponent after an edit and using your weapons to peace control. If you've memorized a few edit techniques, then we recommend moving on to this one next. This next one will teach you how to use peaks, which are more advanced tricks. Raiders Mechanics Maps V3. You'll also learn how to do moving edits, which can really help if you're side jumping or trying to keep up the pace and stay accurate with your edits. Take some time every day to practice on these maps and you'll build the muscle memory you need. Before we wrap things up today, don't forget to check out ProGuides.com and find out how you can go pro today. You think you can handle building now? If so, leave a like and ring that bell to stay up to date on all of our tips and tricks. Catch you next time.